Some 200,000 followers came to the core to hear the verdict against Guru Gurmik Singh. He has millions of followers in India and other countries. Zadi Jha joins us now. He's the chief U.S. correspondent for the Press Trust of India. Sir, great to have you back on our show on Sunday. Thank you. Um, I want to begin by asking you about the popularity of this man. He's so big, he's so popular, he has allegedly six, 60 million followers around the world. How did he become so big? You know, uh, this sect was founded in, in uh, Haryana uh, in 1948, April 1948, by a saint who was originally born in Balochistan. He came to India and he, and the Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh is the third leader of that sect. Over the years, uh, you see, over the last 60, 70 years, they have developed, they have been uh, working among the low, lower class, low class people, uh, downtrodden people, and they have worked a lot in that part of the Haryana and Punjab. Uh, or the northern part, they have a huge followers over there. So he has uh, that following translated into political influence as well. Yeah, naturally means when you have a large following and India being a democratic country where every vote counts, political leaders tend to go to leaders or, or religious groups which have a huge following to get some influence over the votes, yes. But despite the current, uh, the possible rape conviction, uh, he still enjoys his big following. Uh, what are the followings, followers say about his uh, rape conviction? The followers are not willing to believe that their spiritual guru or leader was, was a, a, is now a convicted rapist. Uh, that's why there is anger among them. But, you know, it's, there have been instances in the past where some of the other religious leaders too have been convicted by the court. India has a independent, strong independent judiciary. And you know this particular case started in 2002 when these rapists wrote a letter to the then prime minister, who was also a BJP leader, that this incident happened and the prime minister, then prime minister, ordered a CBI investigation to the case. So this investigation continued over those years, and it has finally culminated into the conviction. So you're saying there was a due process by Mam Mohan Singh, and then it seems no, to be prime minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee was he was the prime minister then. Okay, yeah. um, it looks like um, it, there was a due process. Yeah. Uh, what is likely to happen next? Will he be, you know, serving jail sentences, or will there be a face-saving way out? You know, there they can't be any political influence over Indian judiciary. Indian judiciary is totally independent, and I can't say what is going to happen. But uh, this kind of conviction results in a sentencing from seven years to a life imprisonment. How will this whole thing uh, affect India's political landscape? I don't think it will have much impact on India's political landscape, but it does reflect very poorly on the law and order situation of that particular state. Yes. Yeah, and uh, especially we know that there are over there are hundreds of parties in India, uh, the, but the parliamentary system is very robust. Uh, but meanwhile, it, in some areas, it can uh, turn to be very, um, you know, people battle battle for local interests. Um, so you're saying that it's likely to happen that he will not be serving jail sentences. I don't think so. I, I cannot say anything right now because it's up to the judiciary, which is very independent. In India, it's not influenced by any, any, anyone, uh, and they go by what, uh, what the crime has been done, and mm -hmm. it looks like he, he's headed for between somewhere between seven to a life imprisonment. Ali, thank you so much for your analysis. Most Great to have you on our show.